Hi everybody. Uh, I wanted to check in today and do a quick book chat on the most recent book that I finished, which is called The Garden of Evening Mists by, oops, Tan Tuan Ng. There's the cover. Um, this book was published back in 2012. And I am not sure how I came across it. It had, has been, you know, I downloaded a sample of this on uh, my e-reader like two or three years ago. Um, so I'm not sure, exactly sure where I came across it. I believe that I um, actually heard about it um, because it, um, it was shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize back in 2012. So, you know, I think I, I heard of it that way. And then it sort of hit my radar and, you know, I never have gotten around to reading it. And then this year for my 2016 TBR, I had um, tried to curate a list of reads for 2016 that, um, that had multiple points of view. Um, and this author is actually from um, Malaysia. So um, the book itself, um, this particular book, is, is actually set in in Malaysia, um, and I'll get to that in a moment. But um, anyway, I believe that's how I came across it. Um, he has written, Tan Tuan Ng has written another uh, novel. Um, the name of that one is um, called The Gift of Rain, and um, it was published back in 2007, and it was long-listed for the Booker Prize. So he has these two novels out. He had one long-listed, and one uh, then actually made the shortlist, which is this one that I'm going to chat about a bit today. So, um, having said that, I'm just going to start off our chat about this book with a quote from the book. Um, the main character, um, whose name is Young Ling Tiao, uh, she, uh, she utters this, uh, this quote that, that I just loved. Everywhere I turn, I hear echoes of sounds made long ago. Um, you know, I just thought that was so beautiful because this book is ultimately about memories. Um, where, uh, what, what our story is about te uh, actually is so this uh, this character Lung um, Young Ling um, is um, a judge. She has been on the Supreme Court of. Um, of Malaysia um, and she is in late middle age and she is retiring and so when she re when she finishes up her she's at her last day um, at in that position um, as the novel opens and then she uh, is going to go up to the highlands of Malaysia where she uh, has a property and where um, she has um, had um, she has a long association with um, we find out that this this main character actually has a degenerative neurodegenerative disorder, and she will uh, ultimately lose her memories and um, lose all of her cognition. And so, um, it is with this knowledge that uh, you know we go with her up to the highlands, to um, to this um, to her her uh, house that she has there, which is actually also is surrounded by a Japanese garden. And um, so through um, the narration of this main character, um, she decides to, um, to write down, um, you know, her experience earlier in her life, how she came to actually own this property with the Japanese garden. And what has happened is back in World War II, she had been a, a teenager, like a teenage girl, and she, uh, she and her sister had been sent away to a Japanese internment camp during the Japanese occupation of Malaysia. And ultimately, her sister did not survive the internment. Actually, um, yeah, Yun Ling is the only uh, survivor of of that camp, and what it, and the camp was actually a secret camp. So when the prisoners were taken there, they were blindfolded, and there were lots of twists and turns. And so she has actually no idea where the camp was, and this has sort of haunted her her whole life because. Um, she doesn't even know where her sister, you know, where to find that. That memory is denied her, actually, the knowledge of where that, where she was. Um, 
And so uh, after the war, uh, she does, she survives and she spends her first year, she becomes a lawyer and she spends her first years um, prosecuting uh, war criminals, Japanese war criminals in Malaysia, um, really for the purpose of really trying to find out all the information she can about the, where this camp might be and where her sister um, may be, uh, you know, buried or um, had died. Um, and um, then ultimately she, she has to leave that position. What is happening in Malaysia starting in like 1948, 1949 is they have the Malaya emergency. So following the war, there is another conflict in Malaysia, Malaya, um, that is a communist insurgency, which is a true historical fact. Um, so um, there's a lot of upheaval in um, Malaya at, in, during this period, this earlier period. So this book is actually set in two different periods. It's set kind of, I, I'm gathering the 90s because she talks about it being 40 years since things had happened. And so if that was 1950, um, you know, it would have been, it would have been like the 90s. So that's, that's sort of my guess uh, for the later period when she's in a later middle age. And then obviously the younger period is, um, the, the time of this Malay emergency, so like 1950. I think she goes to, up to the Highlands in 1951. I think the book actually points out the year where we are. Um, but, you know, we meet a whole cast of characters, and the characters are all carrying around these memories that we don't know anything about. Um, so or we don't know a lot of their internal uh, world, but it's slowly revealed to us um, throughout the course of the book. So what happens when, in, when she's... Uh, when she when she goes up to the Highlands for the first time in 1951, is she still got a lot of anger um, for uh, towards the Japanese and towards what is what has happened to her, and um, she goes and visits a family friend um, who uh, owns a tea plantation up there in the in the Highlands, and um, he um, had been a friend of her father's, and um, he uh, she. Um, she tells him that she 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 wants to build um, a garden, a Japanese garden, to her sister because her sister loved Japanese gardens, even though they were interred by the Japanese and the Japanese soldiers were treating them very cruelly. Um, her, her and her sister used to build this Japanese garden in their minds, and they, that's sort of what kept them going was creating this garden. And then so after the war, um, when um, the main character then winds up in the Highlands, then she's she's ultimately setting out to build um, to build a garden for her um, in memory of her sister for her sister. So her her uh, family friend uh, Magnus, who is actually a Boer, um, who had been fighting the British in the Boer War and now is in Malaysia, um, he introduces her to his sort of the next, uh, within walking distance, uh, there is a, a character, a, a man named Aratomo, who is a Japanese gardener who is creating a, a Japanese garden there. Um, he had one, at one time been the, the, the gardener for the emperor of Japan even. Um, and so they make introductions. She asks him to build a garden for um, her sister and he turns her down, but he does allow uh, her to be his apprentice if she wants to be. So she actually apprentices to him. And ultimately, uh, the story, much of the story then hinges on the relationship and the healing relationship that develops between these two characters. So I don't want to give a lot away about the book because I believe that in the different characters, I mentioned that there was a lot of different characters that are all carrying around their own memories um, that are some of which are revealed to us, the reader, throughout the course of the book. Um, but one of the concepts of the Japanese garden that this character Aratomo is is actually an expert at is the um, you know this idea of borrowed scenery, which is used in Japanese gardens where you may you may not be able to see um, something like a mountain feature unless you you're in a certain place. Um, even a certain time for some scenery um, that you won't see. So it's, it, you know, you would maybe turn a corner and you would be looking at a certain bush and then you, you if you gl happen to glance up, you would see a frame of maybe mountains. This is an idea of borrowed scenery. It's like seeing the unexpected and, um, and incorporating that outside, um, you know, influence into your internal, um, into, into the internal 
into the internal experience of the garden, which is really a metaphor then for, you know, the, the internal experience of a, of a person. Um, I, I think, you know, that's what the book is so, so beautifully uh, does. Um, and I don't want to really, I don't really want to um, give away too much about that because to me that's kind of like part of the experience of reading this particular book is actually um, seeing this sort of borrowed scenery um, and and maybe um, there's one character in particular that really when I was reading this character I sort of dismissed him as sort of a um, you know he was an art dealer um, and I just sort of dismissed him and ultimately you know I find out he's got this whole story that's so beautiful um, Parts of the book actually towards the end just just could really almost move me to tears. It's so beautiful, beautifully written, and um, it's such a beautiful experience that was being shared. Um, but about the book, you know, my experience with the book. So, you know, it, I the, probably the first half of the book, I really had a hard time getting through it. I, you know, I don't know if it's the book's, book's fault or if it's, you know, where I was because um, I had a whole lot of things going on um, during the first part of this book, uh, you know, when I was reading this first part of this book. So the first part of the book, you know, I really was not getting engaged with it at all. Um, and then, um, you know, suddenly sort of things sort of changed and and I really, um, I did really then connect with the book uh really probably the last 45 percent of the book um really really well so i don't know that that's a fault of the of the pace of the book or if it's just what was going on in my my own personal life as i was reading the book and i suspect it was what all was going on in my personal life while i was reading the book uh not, not so much the the way the book itself was written because the last 45 um per, probably 45 percent of the book um you know i really connected with and then i really understood what what it was um, I think that that the, the novel was really trying to share with with me the reader so um, you know I really I really I really got a lot from the out from the book like I said parts of it were just so beautifully done um, that um, you know it was just it was just a, a, a great experience so I do want to um, before I finish up there's a couple of points um, one 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 kind of recurring theme in this book is this, this idea of the the uh, goddess of memory and the goddess of forgetting so Magnus um, the, the the family friend that owns the tea plantation he's got the statues of memory and forgetting in his garden and, and you know uh, memory is is a is like a goddess and then forgetting kind of has you know she's got weathered you can't really quite tell the details of her um of her features and their twin sisters memory and forgetting and um you know i th i think um that was such a cool cool concept because forgetting is just she couldn't quite you can't quite tell the details uh because they're muffled and they're shadows and they're mists the garden of evening evening mists has so many multiple multiple meanings to um multiple layers of meaning uh around the story that's told in this novel but um the final uh kind of quote i want to finish up with is from the book um that i thought was a really beautiful quote on memory and it says memory is like patches of sunlight in an overcast valley shifting with the movement of the clouds now and then the light will fall on a particular point in time illuminating it for a moment before the wind seals up the gap and the world is in shadows again you know and i thought that was so so beautiful and so cool because that's like memories that's uh, just so beautifully uh, a description of memory and then also uh, a person's life is just a collection of memories um and so when that person is is no more then the memories are gone and forever then in shadow so you know, it's just so beautiful so anyway uh, i think i'll stop with that um i will have another book chat coming up uh, when i finish my next book which should be very soon so i will see you then take care